Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today we're going to talk about the somewhat thorny subject of the AMD Embedded Ryzen R 1600. A number of you, including myself and Eddie the web guy, there he is, look, he's on camera, not on Zoom or nothing, um, were following when a little bit of information were, appeared on Reddit regarding the DS723 and the fact it's going to arrive with uh, the R 1600, the Embedded Ryzen dual core processor there at 2.6 gigahertz to be clocked up to 3.1 gigahertz. Are you familiar with it? Of course you are because it arrived in this, the DS1522+. Plus. But I think it would be fair to say that the reaction to that CPU has not been, well, bulletproof. A lot of people are not exactly happy about it, one of them being this guy. Um, and today we are going to talk about a few things that are good and bad about both of these platforms. We've structured it point by point, and hopefully by the end of this video, it will help you decide whether to be excited about the new generation of Synology NAS uh, arriving with that embedded uh, Ryzen processor, or you're going to be one of the people, <coughs> Eddie, that is uh, not exactly pleased and would rather a seller on. So let's crack on with point number one. Okay, so go on. Why do you care about your oh, CPU? Okay, okay. First and foremost, it is a higher clock speed. So first and foremost, when you are looking at the CPU, regardless of the NAS it is in, and by then we are of course talking about the 1522, or we're talking about the 722, or we're talking about the uh, uh, sorry, the uh, sorry 723 and 923. Whatever way you're looking at it in there in the future with this processor, it's a higher clock speed. It is again as mentioned, the 2.6 gigahertz CPU there uh, at base. So it at base you with no burst, no turbo, no nothing, it is higher than most of the CPUs out there right now running on the disk station base level series. On top of that can be burst up to 3.1 gigahertz, that's right, cracking the 3 gigahertz level. Now, regardless of whether you are talking about the R1600 or the V1500B, I do think that CPU's base level clock speed is worthy of note in terms of power on that two bay or potential four bay NAS system. Do you not at least acknowledge that a higher base level clock speed is a good thing? It is a good thing if you want to do certain things that require that performance, but not always. Either. Oh, one, the end. Thanks for watching. Well, it's not just about the power, you know? There are other things that are more important. With the NAS in mind, this is a power efficiency as well. It's very, playing really serious role. So not always you need full performance of that core. So that's why you sell it and sell it a little bit like AMDs as well, what they do is you can burst the performance up to like three gigahertz if you need to. But most of the time it's gonna be running on the lower frequency so you can save some energy. Uh, on your energy bill or uh, you can generate less heat as well. There are two, two very important things. I mean, I'll, I'll admit the TDP of the Celerons there, I mean, I think they're at 10 watts at highest. Exactly, 10 watts is like, it costs nothing really. If you, if you run this in long term, especially if the hibernation takes place overnight or when you don't use your NAS, it's literally costs you nothing to run the NAS. Whereas with AMD, you would expect this NAS to do something serious all the time, because otherwise I wouldn't consider putting AMD in there unless I want it to perform some sort of task in the background. And it's going to come with a cost, with the temperature, and it's going to come with uh, energy consumption. But I think a lot of users um, would rather have that in their back pocket. And I know it has a high, I think it's at max, it's rated at 25 watts. And again, I get it. Uh, that's, again, that is at capacity. Most users are not going to use it at that high level. But I think so, there are a contingent of users that would like to have that power in their back pocket. Yes, it's a 24-7 system, but I think it's nicer to have that there, I think, for some cases. But that's not the only reason. It's not all about power, mate, because let's face it, if you're running these applications, any three-year-old that reads PC World is going to know that it's more than the CPU. Let's talk memory, and frankly, the Ryzen uh, embedded CPU supporting up to 32 gig of memory and ECC memory. Hello, I think a good mid-level server there. I think it's time for users to jump on board with ECC a little bit. And this is probably, uh, if we look at the two bay and that and that potential four bay, and indeed the 1522, these are lovely little price points to have access to error correcting code or error code correction memory. You can correct me in the comments um, there with data passing through the system and 32 gig of memory there yum yum mate I, seriously i know it's probably going to start with two or four gig 
maybe uh, the you know the 923 if it has that CPU will have 4 gig but the idea of scaling up to 32 gig for things like VMs or for all those individual processes I welcome that and that's something I'm not going to get from the, the, the Celeron what are the, what's the enemy running these days the N5105 so I think right now I think that's worth writing home about do you not think that's important no Wow. <laughs> <laughs> because now you put yourself into a business category. So you have completely said goodbyes to all home market, anything to do with multimedia. That's it. You decide that you're going to be running something serious like virtual machines, web servers, and things complicated, things like that on this device. That's all. But I think, I, I, Dan, I do think it's about having that, um, that uh, potential power and that useful feature in my back pocket. What exactly is in the back pocket if you go seller on? Two words, integrated <laughs> graphics. Okay. This is a very important thing because full bay, um, this is where becoming really popular choice among home users. And what home users do, they play videos, they watch um, media server. Exactly, they, they save some photos and, 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 and audio and all sorts of things. They fall multimedia, it's like perfect choice. And AMD is not good for that. Yes, you, you got this ECC RAM, which is error correction, but this. You don't need that stuff for multimedia. Mm. You don't need this all high power power for that as well. You need graphics, and what graphics do is um, converting your videos into compatible format. Because not only because you might argue, like, oh, you don't need to stream them uh, remotely, so you don't need transcoding. Yes, you do need transcoding even at home. Because even something like Fire Sticks, like this 4K, they don't support um, H.265 encoding, which is H HEVC. And in that, that instance, is, uh, NAS will be converting this video on the fly into that uh, sort of video so it, that the device can actually play it. Otherwise, if you do, don't do that, you'll need to manually convert the videos and keep a second copy on your NAS, which is taking up the space, which is already important, just so you could stream this, uh, this video. So integrated graphics is really important for, for also even things like um, AI engines for photos, <laughs> face recognitions, all these little things. This is all you need, this stuff. What, what, what could be your argument for not having uh, graphics? I mean, right now I would say that um, when it comes to, and I'm not struck, sure, don't just the longest I've ever heard any speak without me interrupting. It's the first time ever. Um, but Okay, so we've done some bench testing with uh, the R1600 with 4K on Plex, and I found that you're right. Um, when it came to conversion, when it came to encode, decode, when it came to running HEVC stuff on server-side transcoding uh, or uh, re-encoding con uh, conversions, it did not do well. I'll give you that. Uh, okay, so yes, it went to CPU utilization 100%. Uh, watch out for that video. But if you are able to run uh, client-side um, encodes or your running devices that do support HEVC, then I do think the horsepower inside is enough for that. Because you could probably argue saying that majority of people still prefer to watch 1080p content instead of 4K. Mm -hmm. In that, that stance you could say, yeah, that, that dual core CPU can still transcode. Wow, that, 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 is, that is mean. <laughs> it, it could still do it, but lots of people still consume 1080p content, so that, that, mm. that, that's true. And 4K could be only for local streaming, but some don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're being a little bit harsh, mate. Like, there are other things that you've got to factor in with those embedded horizons. And one of the things I think that gets massively overlooked all the time is to do with threads. Yes, the R1600 is a dual core CPU. There is, of course, the V1500B that's used on the 21 Plus series. That is a quad core AMD embedded riser on there. And all of them have twice the number of threads. So your dual core's got four threads, your four core's got eight threads. And those threads can be converted into virtual CPUs. So they can be dedicated to individual tasks. And it allows you to run more multiple processes rather than utilizing, for example, a whole core inefficiently on one task. And I think people aren't really giving a little bit of credence to this processor with that, those additional threads being built in. Surely you would accept that threads are a good thing. Do you know what is better than threads? 
<laughs> bloody cores. <laughs> okay. Because cores is something dedicated. You have this uh, thing available. We read this like virtual things like, oh, I'm going to have a little bit of that and borrow this and this that and the system need to manage like, okay, how much is each thing is getting? And it's like balancing act all the time. When you have a dedicated core, that's it. You create your virtual machine, that's your core, that's, you can play with that little CPU inside a big CPU. Mm. And the performance is much, much better because you have this performance available instead of like threading between cores. But again, even then, if you look at Celerons that are dual core, so there are dual core Celerons out there. I know the 723 and the 923, a lot of people earlier this year, myself included, did not think they would arrive with uh, the embedded Ryzen processor. I, I thought it would be Celeron, but they do still provide dual-core Celerons there as well. And in that dual-core Celeron, you'd still only have like two threads with that for the most part. Wow. Surely, would, that's not, a lot. But, <laughs> do, you not, do you not think it's still good to have four virtual threads? Um, no, and to give me cores. <laughs> More cores, that, that's all I need. It's for the threads you can put in your back pocket or something. Do you know what? This is this could even be bigger than this. Let's be realistic about this. You know, we live in a world right now where there are CPU shortages. There are tremendous market forces in place, and I think it would be remiss not to, you know, at least acknowledge one: there are shortages right now of CPUs. And more than anyone, Intel is the worst hit by this. Intel are still providing, at least on the server grade stuff, they're charging way, way, way more overall for their processors. So you end up in a situation where. I know the market is a little blurry now, but I still believe right now Intel, at least in this sphere of influencer servers, is still the market leader. So you've got the market leader there that's charging way more than uh, AMD, and with fewer CPUs out there, they're even talking about you know killing off the branding for Celeron and Pentium and the like, so it will become some weird model ID. I can kind of see the logic why Synology looked at this field of scope, looked at the forecast, and went, you know what? AMD right now, we can get at a more affordable price in our systems, which we can then extend into our systems. You've then got CPUs that in some cases, as mentioned earlier on, provide a higher benchmark of power utilization and power accessibility, and all of that without being restricted by market forces on CPUs that are becoming harder and harder to find. There are, I think there is logic behind Synology making this jump ship to AMD. Do you not at least acknowledge that there may be logic and method to the madness that you may find of Synology making the jump away from Intel Celerons and into this embedded um, R1600s. Why are we even having this conversation, really? Why don't they just go for Pentium? They used to have Pentiums before, but then, yeah. they, then they got rid of them and now they are introducing AMDs. Ridiculous. If you don't introduce AMD with graphics in there, just like go the Pentium. Yeah. There, there are lots of Pentiums like J's, G and N series. They are as powerful and cheaper than these AMD R series. You have your cores and you have your threads. threads you have all yeah. of these things in that um, Pentium CPU. Why don't you bring them back? I mean, again, it could be reasons. It could be the pricing. I mean, we don't know. I mean, again, other brands are still factoring in Pentiums right now. We won't talk about that too much, but they are still out there. But there must be, maybe it's a power consumption reason. Maybe it's power utilization of Pentium that is the issue. Maybe they have a high TDP. Your bloody um, Ryzen's have uh, high heat, high power consumption. So what's the problem with it? <laughs> Firstly, not my Ryzen's, they're everyone's Ryzen's. Secondly, I think if it comes to a Pentium, another thing we have to factor in is if you look at the history of CPUs over the last five, six, you know, not even going nuts and say 10 years, the Pentium processors have always been the ones that seem to be at shortfall, whether they're being utilized by laptops and all kinds of stuff. But when it comes to any systems I've seen in the past that have had Pentiums, they always seem to have chip shortages. And I just think, again, this comes down to Intel not supplying demand. There. I don't genuinely think they're going to agree on this. I mean, again, we're going to wrap things up here on the video, I think, because I think we can both agree that we don't agree. Um, but let us know what you guys think, because clearly Synology have committed to this series of CPUs. And I do genuinely believe there are strengths to them. It's not perfect. There are clearly strengths that went along with the Celerons as well. But right now, if you, you were already looking at buying new generation Synology and you've been a long-term Synology user as well, um, are you going to go for the likes of the 723 and the 923? Are you going to hold out for a 223 and a 423 to see if they arrive with embedded graphics? I hope they um, 
yeah, two, two, three, which is like dual core option for for the NASes, would come with at least embedded graphics in the AMDs or Celerans or <laughs> Pentium, something like that. If they don't, I'm not getting new NAS. That, this is pointless. I'm you, getting QNAP instead. Oh, wow. Uh, but no, no. But I mean, put, put simply, if they arrive, then you're saying right now, if the next gen had integrated AMD graphics like the Vega or Zen graphics, then you would jump on board. Yes, potentially. Energy consumption again is, oh. like, is, is a factor. But Someone's I'll, looking at the energy bill, aren't they? But I would, <laughs> um, I would still consider getting a new NAS then if there is graphics, yeah. Well, for now, until we know more on that next generation, this has been the, um, the AMD R1600, the good and the bad. Let us know what you guys think of the comments. If there are points that we missed or stuff you agree or disagree with, that's what the comments are for. If you enjoyed the video, click like. It really helps us understand what we are doing right and what we're doing wrong ever since YouTube basically devalued and depowered that dislike button. And of course, if you need help choosing the right now solution for you, both now and in the future, there are links to all the products we talked about today on Amazon, which if you use, if you work going to buy from there anyway we get a little kickback to carry on doing what we do and of course use the free advice section linked in the description over on nas compares and the community ask nas compares support forum where you can put your questions to the wider world but apart from that thank you so much for coming in eddie and we will see you on the next video